Well, hello. Today I'd like to give you my first impressions of the Parker Explorer. Sorry. Today I'd like to give you my impressions of the Pilot Explorer with Parker Quink Washable Blue in it. Uh, this is a uh, low-cost pen. It is one of five that I purchased with channel money. Uh, one single check, actually. And I just decided to try some of the newer, lower-cost options I saw out there. So I bought a Parker Vector, Parker uh, Waterman Allure, a Schaefer Icon, a Schaefer Kylo Ren, and this uh, Pilot Explorer. Now the Pilot Explorer, well, let's just take a look at it. All right, so this is the Pilot Explorer. This is the last of that group of lower cost fountain pens that I purchased using channel money. And it arrives in a fairly unassuming box, which is what I like to see with a low cost pen. Less packaging is better. And then I opened it and found out that it's not quite the case. But anyway, we've got a use and care guide with a bunch of junk. <clears throat> and we have a box. Which I feel like I've seen this kind of box before. On a park shoe. Yeah. What brand is this? Ah, Pilot Pen. So the pen itself... I actually think the pen itself is rather attractive. Um, we've got Pilot engraved on the side here. We've got these black dot things. I kind of like the modern looking finial. Plain black clip. Another modern looking black finial. Feels like a metal body of some sort. Uncap it. This is the nib seen, I think, on a Pilot Metropolitan. Or Pilot Kakuno, although it doesn't have the smile. And it's a medium nib. Open it up. Got a Con 20 converter. This is the old squeeze converter. Which they're perfectly serviceable. In fact, let's put it into service right now. What are we going to put in an exotic Japanese pen? What else? Parker Quink Washable Blue. This channel is nothing if not predictable. Of course, with a converter like this, I don't know how full it's getting, but I'm getting fewer bubbles. So we'll let it inflate one last time, and bang. Inked. Alright, so this is the Pilot Explorer. Uh, the ink in it is Parker Quink. Washable blue. Uh, flex. Didn't really expect any, and I'm not getting any. I have to say again, this is an attractive pen. And the way it's writing, I'm finding very comfortable. It's a, you know, a lighter pen. Definitely doesn't have the feel of an expensive pen, but uh, I like how it writes. And I can't decide 100% if it's metal or plastic. Anywho, flex, uh, wetness and flow. I think that's doing pretty well. Smear test. Make sure I'm still on screen. Oh yeah, that's a nice wet pen. You know, I, I, I think it could be argued this is either a fine or a medium, but, you know, it's a medium, Japanese medium. Reverse writing, if you're into that kind of thing. I don't judge. Reverse. Kind of scratchy, but perfectly usable. And finally, the world-famous Pierre Gustafson test. Don't press down, just write lightly. And I'm quite impressed. So, uh, one thing, since it's a slip cap, I like that. It's not the 
snappiest slip cap, but not bad. All right, so there you go, the Pilot Explorer. So I was relatively pleased by the Pilot Explorer. You know, I think it's an attractive pen. It's a very lightweight pen, but it's an attractive pen. Uh, I think it writes well. I wasn't as thrilled with it as the Waterman Allure or the Parker Vector XL, but I was, I liked writing with it. Um, I think having the medium nib helped. I have owned a Pilot Metropolitan, in fact, I might still own that one, and a Pilot, whatever the plastic version of it is. I actually just gave it away this winter to somebody. Um, but uh, this has the same nib on it. Pilot Kakuno has the same nib, too. It has the same nib. And I know I like the nib. Now, I didn't like the Metropolitan because it was it felt heavy in the back, and, and it had a big step up, which I didn't mention in the video. Uh, but I had a big step up to the barrel from the section, which I didn't like. Uh, I don't remember why I didn't like the plastic one, whose name I don't remember, all of a sudden. Even though I looked it up right before filming the video. Arr. But I, uh, I didn't. But this one gets it right. The one thing this pen is missing is a really satisfying click. It has a click. Just not a real satisfying one compared to some other pens. Um, and it feels a little bit too lightweight for me. I think it is made out of metal. Um, probably aluminum if it's this lightweight. And I think it's attractive. It just, I don't know, it feels like it's missing something. But very easy to hold, very comfortable. And when I start writing, I stop thinking about all those things and I just write. So isn't that what we want with a pen? So, all in all, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I like this classic red and black color combination. Um, you know, if you watch me dress myself enough, you'll notice that red and black is one of my color combinations that I like. Uh, so, one important test is the all-important pocket test, which uh, it took a little doing there, but it did slip fairly nicely over the pocket and more importantly it came off pretty easily so uh overall i'm pretty happy with this one it, it's not a pen i'm not having my socks blown off like i was with the waterman allure or the parker vector xl but i do think it's a good pen and i'm glad i bought it so uh if you're looking for a lower cost pen this might be an option so anyway i well, thank you for watching We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.